right guys, another video here on the vehicle that's been sitting for a long time. This is an old Jeep and I'm told it's been sitting since 1989. So uh, she's sunk in the ground pretty good in the front too. And we've had a lot of sub freezing temperatures recently to where I couldn't come really get this. I was afraid to rip an axle out, but it's been, well, still a little hard, but it's been above freezing the last day or two. It's actually 31 right now. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna hopefully get this whole girl out of here and see see what's going on But uh, you see the inspection sticker Pennsylvania 1984 and I guess we'll just do a quick walk around tour on this uh, The ship to rock side to side, but doesn't go forward These are locked up completely now this thing actually had like four tarps on it and uh, the guys who yard whose yard this is he came out today took the tarp off he said there was like a foot of leaves in, inside of it and he, he got all that out and kind of cleaned it up which did me a, a real solid favor on that uh, i'm told this has a buick 3.8 liter actually a buick v6 i just kind of assumed it might have been a 3.8 tires look like they still got some life in them i don't know what these seats are out of and, uh, and got no latches here Here's a look at the motor, carbureted, little old V6, tiny little guy. So well, let's see if she rolls. Oh yeah, it's even got a, a tow bar on the front of it. That's pretty neat. Sharp looking old Jeep front end. If anybody's got uh, info on this, well, I guess we'll be looking it up anyway. So manual lock and front hubs. So let's uh, move some things and try to get it out. Got my truck parked over at the gate and uh, kicked this block. You see the ground's not too frozen anymore. Still a little bit, but I think the first step is I don't even have my trailer with us. We're gonna use the winch and try to get her get her moving and then we'll go get the trailer. And then we'll have to clear some of this stuff out of here. Look at this old wheelbarrow. This thing. And talk about a heavy duty old antique wheelbarrow that you can just let it sit out forever. That thing is sweet. Look at that thing. Old hornet's nest. I'm not going to pull on this receiver because that's already bent out to begin with. And the axle is somewhat uh, accessible, but I think let's see if these will air up first, all right? Now what's cool about having the clip-ons is you can set that and then come over here out of harm's way, let her rip, and not worry about the tire blowing up in your face. And when she's filled up, you shut the valve off, look at your pressure, we got 30 PSI. And the valve core's not leaking. Pulled her right out of the frozen ground. Look at that. Ah, oh, come on. One of them had to be buried. Shovel back here. Yes. It's one of these military surplus ones. These things are awesome to have in your car. I think they sell like aftermarket ones too now. Chinese made, but this is this good old USA made one. There she is down there, has the cap on it. Man, I'll tell you, if somebody didn't leave the cap on this, that would be a nightmare. Perfect. Oh, that one's leaking. Just give it the straighter flick. Good to go. This is actually a custom made hose that I've showed in other videos where I have four clip-ons and then the end you can extend it or put attachments on that way you can inflate or deflate all four of your tires at the same time of course there is a flaw with this i suppose if you leave this valve open you walk away uh, you'll you'll probably pop a tire because this'll it turns off at 90 psi so this will be the first time i could try this winch out after making some repairs to it and i'm kind of excited for that we'll just do a single single lead first and see what what it does and with a wireless remote we can see that harm's way Yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. It's just dragging my truck. Let's turn it off, put it in full roll low. Oh, 
looks like we got ourselves a roller, which is awesome to see. Oh, this tow bar is, I gotta strap that up, but that is so cool. That's gonna be a lot of fun to mess around with. Unless it's in gear or something's just blocking it at this side the wheels have locked up on. Maybe it's just in gear, huh? I couldn't really rock it before. It is going up and down now. What's this clutch do? Ah, uh, yeah, no. It's just going down with the brake. Look at that. get my truck straightened out first. And We'll call that winch fixed. Works good. The motor is a little bit noisier than it used to be, probably because that bearing has uh, maybe a touch pitting inside of it. But uh, yeah, that's fixed. Oh, got some dogs coming. Kill our dogs. <laughs> Don't want them running out. Got a quad pair of sil silky terriers, you said? Yeah, silky. Silky. Silky terriers. That's silky. the boy. That's the, that's the father. This is the mother. Oh, that's the mama right there? These your children? Mrs. Papa? Very cool. All right, Scott. Good meeting you, man. You too, man. Thanks a lot. I'd say that took longer than anticipated, but the hard part's over. Go get the trailer and bring her on home. The reason I didn't grab the trailer before is because it's blocked with the Fury, which hasn't ran in a while. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that around with the truck. I might have to grip the, uh, get the uh, tractor out. Let's see if this little, little JF Eggwo will work for a battery. <laughs> When you have anything sitting here, it's silly trying to get double axle trailers in and out of this yard. Uh, when I first moved in, he didn't have a fence over there. So now this was open too. And I decided to put this big 12 foot eight gate on an angle like this. So that way, when I swung it open, I had a nice big opening. The front of the truck or tractor could swing out there. But now you just get kind of tucked in this little, little tight corner here. And I used to have a triple axle trailer and that was even tougher. The, the more axles you have, the more the trailer just wants to scrub and not, not turn. Like a single axle, it's no problem. And this is why I get nothing done in my life because it's on my way back to get the uh, the Jeep and then I see the lake is frozen. I always carry some skates in my truck, so figure why not go for a quick spin on the lake. Perfect. Looks like somebody fell in right here though, recently, not too long ago. Hello, who decided to show up? Down Sater ADV. Buddy. What's up, Livia? Banana muffin. That's the best thing in the world, and you should respect them. You should respect. You should respect your grandmas for making them, and whoever makes them. Okay. <laughs> You're insane. All right. Okay. So <laughs> you heard it from Olivia. Respect your grandmother's banana, banana bread. Yeah. Banana bread. Yeah. Rhino straps for uh, going on the axle. Kind of nice. They got little 
like sheath covering on them too. I mean, not that you really need soft ties on something like this, but good to have if I'm ever transporting something nicer. All right, we're all locked and loaded. Really, I, I like chains so much more, especially on something like this, but I suppose those are nice, again, for if you had like a painted axle or something, but that's just, that's just so much more robust having a chain wrapped around there. Check out this tire too, it's about to blow, blow apart. You know what? Oh, see, look, I almost overlooked that too. Um, this is gonna rest on. Mm, it's mm -hmm. going backwards. Mm. Don't like that. Well, we should probably get these loose things out too. You know, with having the holes in the floor, like boom, that. See, that could have rolled out, hit the trailer, and then went through someone's windshield. So, this stuff. This be okay. We get turbo hiding under this thing. Oh, where are you going, buddy? I saw him seeking shelter under the snow. It's like, uh, yeah, a rusty Jeep is not the place to go, right? that park there till the weather clears up and uh, till I'm ready to tear in. I think one of the reasons this thing is just so rusty, I mean, besides its age, is this used to be their beach truck. And I just noticed it uh, does have the beach permit from 1983, Brigantine Beach, which is kind of cool. I actually had my Tundra out on that, that beach a few times too. It's kind of expensive, but it's like the only beach in New Jersey that you can actually go you know, cruise your truck around. And there's Turbo going back to nap mode. Look at that little kidder. Yeah, we looking at you, buddy. Hey guys, real quick, huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to put more of my time into working on junky vehicles that may or may not be worth fixing. But listen, if you've ever had an inkling to build your own website or purchase a domain, definitely check them out because they got a super easy to use platform with all sorts of useful tools with everything laid out nice and neat on there. I remember way back in the day when I was a kid making websites on GeoCities and boy have things come a long way since then. So if making your own website sounds interesting, then consider heading over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you decide to launch a website, then go to squarespace.com slash no nonsense and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. And now back to the Dauntless V6. Ah, we got a nice 40 degree day. So let's see if we can tear into this, get it running. I was doing some more research, definitely a military Jeep because it's got the cut in here for the slave jump start receptacle for like jumping other vehicles. See that tire went flat again. Uh, and it is a 1965, I got a title for this. So that's really sweet since I usually don't get titles. do is hose everything down. Should have done this weeks ago. This windshield's definitely off something else because the M38 had a split window instead of a solid piece. So it's a CJ5 windshield. This has got Unity power beam lights on here. Chicago, USA. I'll rust it out on the bottom, but these are cool. So after doing some more research, this seems to be the Buick 90 degree V6, which was sold to uh, Kaiser Jeep, I believe in the mid 60s, and they, they renamed it the Dauntless V6, but it's a 225 cubic inch, and it's known for having a rumbly idle, like rough idle due to its firing order of 90 degrees, 150, 90, 150. And uh, yeah, apparently that was a well-liked characteristic. Almost looks like this thing was in a flood because of all this sand and the plug wires are all off. The water pump is completely seized up on it. The radiator cap's just sitting on there, and that looks to be empty. Alternator spins on the dipstick. Oh, we are really over full. So that's not a good sign. That means there could be water inside the engine. Hopefully not, but let's drain it. Deep pan for that. Oh. 
Oh, I want to rip this oil pan off. Well, it's oil, but it's nasty, but that's great. No water. For some reason, this thing had like 10 quarts of oil on it. You burn in the waste oil heater, though. Bust rust detergent action penetrating oil. It's been sitting so long, I'll pop the spark plugs out and spray some lube in there before trying to rotate it. Got some AC Delcos, no rust on the tips. Let's see if we can get this water pump come back to life. Oh, what the heck? It actually hits the lower rad hose though. Look at that. I don't see anything out of the place or bent, but uh, hmm. something going on there. The crank pulley has got a stainless steel bolt on it too. That's just sitting here loose. No idea what's up with that. Fuel filter. Oh, that hose snapped right in half. Oh yeah, it's about uh, 30 years old fuel. Yep. Fifteen, sixteen socket on the crank. And a moment of truth, does she rotate? Oh yeah, yes she does. Excellent, well, we'll go full 360. Oh, oh, it got tight. Maybe it's in gear though. Let's go the other way. No, definitely not in gear and it got tight there where I couldn't go any further. So I'm going the opposite way now. Oh, all sorts of stuff coming out of the flywheel area. I see sweet gum tree balls coming all out of this housing, but let's see. Oh, there it is on the other side. Something probably had a nest in here, and I think that's what was causing my binding. So we gotta, we gotta get all these out. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see better than me, uh, but I think it's pretty full in there. This hair's all dangling in my face. What, what is this from? It's like looks like a horse hair or human hair caught on the exhaust that's rusted through. And get some duct tape on that muffler. Well, that's a good sign that the engine locking up wasn't because of anything else. At least I hope not. Hopefully, there's no critter still in here, huh? I'm able to get a look at the freeze plugs too, and uh, they seem to be good. Maybe a couple pinholes in them. Cut some fresh copper out on these. You know, I guess I should try and reuse the original battery clamps. But I try to do this with using no parts if possible. Totally usable. Hose down that starter a little bit, in case I have to remove it. So I'm connected down at the solenoid and we're live. So let's do a first crank, no plugs. Oh boy, solenoid works, here we go. Sounds nice. Let's uh, let's do a compression check real quick. See what we got. Of course, it'll be a wet compression check, but uh, I'm kind of curious. I hosed down the linkage earlier too. Oh, 
Oh, yes, it works. Ready to open that throttle. Oh, look at that. 90 PSI. Woo, that one's got 140 PSI. And I heard it leaking on the hose, too. So we had 140, 90, 50, 75, 50, and 50 PSI. Let's see if that comes back to life in the future, but uh, good to, to note that. Now let's throw the plugs in and listen to the crank. Sounds not great. Well, let's get some spark going now. So we got a vacuum advanced distributor. Might need some fire wires on this thing. It's so dry rotted. I can't even. What you doing up here? Get back to the yard. Come on. <laughs> Mechanical advance is good. And the points don't look bad. Well, actually, okay, no, they definitely gonna be cleaned. Not gonna do the Mortsky flick on it this time because last time that broke the points. I'll go get a piece of emery cloth. These don't have the felt pad to lubricate, but there's a good amount of grease on the cam in there. So, Let's see if we got movement on those points. Yeah, we go. Got my test light hooked up to the positive side on the battery, and we got a ground at the coil. So when I crank it, that should pulse. Hopefully, you guys can see that all right. I got, I got no pulsing ground there. Points out they're not making contact. Oh yeah, they're really corroded in there. So I got to give them some nice long streaks with this. There's all that crap coming out. No more ski flick was fixing this. I got those cleaned up. Now we should have a pulsing ground. And we do. Very nice. I'll now switch the test light over to the ground side of the battery and take our positive lead. This is hooked to the battery plus. Hook it to the positive side of the coil. I should have a positive on the negative side of the coil. I do, so that means the windings inside are good. And I should have spark because this is sending the pulsing ground, which energizes and then collapse the uh, primary side of the coil, which induces a current flow on the secondary side of the coil, a spark. You give it some starting fluid and if the coil's good, it should fire up. I did check the firing order. Let's see what this spark looks like. Uh, I got nothing on here. There we go. After cleaning this one out, I do have spark, so it's these rusty leads. I gotta clean them out, and I think then we'll fire. These bottle brushes are good for something like this. Let's give that one more go. Even though I got a charger going, this battery's kind of shot, so I just hooked up the JF Egua. Let's get some more cranking power. that one cylinder. Throw some more lube, start fluid and lube down there. There it is, that's a runner. That is a runner. All right, let's get this carb cleaned up. I always like to try out the car before pulling it because sometimes you'd be amazed at depending on what kind of fuel it was stored with. So I hooked up gravity fuel tank to the line. I actually tried hooking it to the pump first, but uh, wasn't get any flow at all through the pump. And it just took fuel and the, the uh, float has shut off. So let's, let's see what happens here now. go any further let's get a new oil filter on this because should have done that before it could be restricted because all that crappy oil in there i mean i'm sure this thing's got a rod knock either way but i'd rather be safe than sorry 
and uh, this filter looks really crummy. When they're old like this, the element inside could break apart and then clog the entire system up. I mean, I've never seen that happen, but it just seems like something that could happen. Maybe I even have something that will fit instead of having to run out to the store. Got some oil filters here, mostly for motorcycles and such, but I have a couple screw-ons in here. No, it looks like all motorcycle filters. Nice day to go for a rip on the Varla anyway. This guy's got a sweet Peterbilt here. Oh. Now if only I was sponsored by Die Hard, that'd be cool, huh? It is beautiful out today. What's up, man? My guys here at Advanced Auto had that filter in stock. Yeah, like the oil that's in here is just really sludgy and thick. Oh shoot, downstate your oh, ADV boy. in the house. Oh boy. I'm wondering if you spit on it yet, that's all you need. He's looking fresh. It'll get right in. Oh, there you go. Choke her Choke up. Choke her up. You're a little choke. It's almost like, I don't... It's almost like it's got 400,000 miles and it's 70 years old. And was just beat to death. There it goes, see? <laughs> So she's a runner, but to be a driver, there's going to be a lot more work involved. And what do we need bare minimum? Well, definitely need a new water pump and a belt. Four hoops, and I ain't putting there in this one again. I mean, that just is about to explode. We want our lock and hubs to work. Maybe take those apart or just keep hosing them down. The fuel tank will need to be addressed. And a pump, since that doesn't flow fuel through it. The throttle works, but does not return and the clutch and brake are seized together. Which I can see why, because they're on the same shaft. Clutch, brake pedal, goes to the master cylinder right here. That's probably seized up, I'm sure. And get a new one of those. Uh, so we'll spray this all down and get everything lubed up. Check the fluids in the gearbox transfer case front and rear differential. The spring packs have some rust jacking, but I think they'll be okay for now. And then just a little bit of body work throughout but I think this will be a good running driving Jeep. Ah, uh, no, nothing out of the ordinary. I expected it to be all blocked up because that oil was so sludgy, but just a regular old oil filter. As Vice Grip Garage would call it, that's some Serious weight reduction there. Well, what do they call these? Uh, speed holes, right? Tons of weight reduction. Let's see what these brakes look like. I'm gonna see what the inside of these rims look like and thinking maybe I could even just put a regular 16 inch tire on there. Get by with that, right? I'll sip out these brakes.
Not too bad. Um, yeah, it definitely needs some wheel cylinders, slave cylinders, whatever you want to call them, but uh, not all rusted out. It's like these have aluminum pistons in them. You see all that corrosion coming out? So that's that's not going to be fixable. I don't need new ones of these. Unlike the Fury, which had made in USA, all cast iron wheel cylinders on there, no aluminum. They were totally rebuildable. Oh, yep. No, definitely needs some new brake lines too. So if you want to see all that and more in a part two, then consider dropping me a comment down below to let me know. Or if you have any ideas for future plans of this, drop that down below too. And uh, if you want to support the channel, go and pick up one of the Plymouth Fury shirts. Hopefully have more shirts in the future, but that's all I got for now. And I can't thank you guys enough for watching this far if you did. So thank you very much. Uh, this is No Nonsense Know How here, and I hope to see you again. Why don't you spark me like you used to do? And say sweet nothings like you used to coo. I'm the same old trouble that you've always been through. So why don't you love me like you used to do? Let's see if we have a used tire I can throw on here real quick. This guy. It's got one little screw in it. We got a 215 60 16. Let's see if that works. I wonder the other tires held there. These actually have tubes in them. Not in bad shape at all. In here with my other tire valves, I had one of these larger rubber style ones that should fit in there because this is the larger hole. Not the right size, but that'll hold. I got it all slopped up with some bead sealer. That'll work for rolling it around until I get some nicer tires. Now she wants to roll. Definitely looks cooler with the 6x16s on there, but that'll work.